Hey guys, Mike, Glowmark Designs. Uh, we're gonna run through some hats today. So I am trying something a little new, working through that process, give you guys a glimpse into it, uh, kind of give you my review. Uh, I'm using Hide Bond. I uh, just got an order of that in the other day. I've already done one. It actually came out pretty good. I like it so far. So I'm gonna try it with another set of hats I'm doing. And uh, I'll give you guys my honest review on that. So stick with me, let's get started. Right, so for those of you guys who aren't familiar with the uh, Hide Bond product, it does actually get put onto the leather first. So uh, first thing I gotta do is get this sheet rolled out. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, they iron it on directly to the sheet of leather itself, as you can see, it's the back side of the leather. So I just got to get the glue facing the right direction. I'll, uh, I'll iron that. It'll transfer the glue over to the sheet of leather, and then it'll be ready to go. So that's going to be step one, and then uh, kind of go from there. So let me get this iron heated up. They do recommend, I think they said a uh, cotton press was the setting that they use, which I believe is just the hottest they can get their iron. So I'm going to go ahead and get mine to the hottest level, go from there as well. Right now I'm just getting mine cut to the right length. I did run a, like I said, I did a test on it last night. So I did actually use a little piece out of this corner. So I'm just gonna go ahead and trim it. And then I'll, I'll use that for another project at a different time. I'm sure you guys did notice too, I've just got a sheet of paper down. Uh, the reason I put that down, I do a lot of staining and a lot of different paints and colors. I mean, you can see there's a bunch of cans, the stains. There's stuff all over the place. So just to protect that sheet of leather, make sure I don't transfer any of those color over. I actually, that one that I tested yesterday, you could see some spots on it where I did get, uh, I think it was some stain that was on this desk. I got some over onto that sheet as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and protect that and make sure that I don't do that again. I should probably note too, this isn't a paid review by any means. Um, I'm sure if you're watching this channel, you probably say, I only have five subscribers, I'm brand new to the YouTube. I've done a little bit with the like, gaming stuff and whatnot in the past, but as far as Glowmark is concerned, this is this is brand new. So uh, I, I don't even, Hidebond wouldn't even know who I was if you had told them. And this is, uh, this is gonna be the second time I've used it so far. Um, I'll show you guys that other hat too. I'll give you a little glimpse into what I'm pulling off of that deal. But this is this is going to be completely honest, unpaid, and just kind of my my feelings on the on the process itself. All right. So this is the hat that I did last night, just to kind of give you guys a quick glimpse at it too. Um, this is, if you can see that, it's new core steel. One of their mills are actually in. It's uh, technically I think it's Bradley, but they operate and they call it their Kankakee location. So this was a, it was just a test hat. I'm actually doing some stuff for them for uh, it's their annual cash bash. Uh, this year, the money's gonna be going to the Harbor House. Um, so I wanted to donate some items, give them some stuff to put in there. Obviously it helps my company a little bit and then it's, uh, it's also going to a good cause. So I have absolutely no problem throwing some stuff out there and hopefully, you know, bringing in some money for them. Um, so. I did, this was my first test piece that I used out of this small chunk of, uh, of the sheet itself um, <clears throat> out of the hide bond. So far, I'm happy with it. It's, it's in there, good, I don't know. Yeah, there's not a really good angle I can get on this. But I, I can't find any, any edges that feel loose at all, that felt tight. Uh, I just pressed it with a cheap Vivor press. Um, the new core logo, as far as the design I did on it, I don't know if anybody's ever seen their logo before, but there's a couple sets of rivets in uh, some versions of that logo. So I wanted to go ahead and rivet the hat to it as well. So I did actually go through the process of getting that on there and then, you know, really just bring it up that extra notch. I did a couple of rivets on each side of it there. So that's, uh, that's one of my items I did. So the patch I'll be doing today, it won't be a new core one. Um, this is just for a couple kids and uh, the dad, but gives you a little glimpse into the process of some of the other ones that I do. I do airbrush all my stains. I start from just basic sheet of leather on everything. Uh, typically I'll burnish the edges. I'll, uh, I'll bevel them as well. Just kind of, it depends on the product and the look they're going for. It really just kind of goes into how I decide on what to do with it and adjust from uh, the customer. Each customer kind of gets something a little different. All right, so it feels like my iron's pretty hot. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this. Gonna shift it over those 
little cuts I made. Hopefully I don't get anything snagged in the process here. Um, so it is pretty, pretty basic for the most part. The one thing that I wasn't sure of was which side was the actual glue and which side was the transfer paper. I thought it would be a little bit thicker. So if you, uh, if you're trying this product, it is the clear piece. I think they address it in a video and he just, he talks about the glossy side, but I don't think he ever really said which side was the glue. He just said, oh, the glossy side, this, and then kind of went forward with the process. So it is something I wanted to note on because I didn't realize it when I went to start and then kind of even looking at the directions, they tell you leave the transfer paper, but coming from the vinyl side, the transfer paper tends to be clear, or at least I think of it as being clear, like that transfer sheet. Uh, so I wasn't sure, but lesson learned. It is the clear. The clear is the glue. The white itself is the paper. It might be obvious to some people. wasn't obvious to me. All right. So with the iron nice and hot, you're just going to basically just start right on the glue, and you're just going to heat it up and uh, let that glue start to adhere to the leather itself. My first thing, I'm going to kind of start from the center and just try to push any air bubbles out of the center of it, try to get it at least started onto the sheet. They do also tell you in the directions as well not to be too concerned with overheating it because it is like the glue itself can be reheated and kind of reformed. So you're better off going a little overboard if you're not 100% giving it just that last little extra bit of heat and being sure than you would be to uh, underdo it and not get that glue transferred. All right, I feel like that's plenty of heat, so I'm gonna go ahead and shut my iron off. I'm just gonna let that cool down, let this sheet cool down a little bit as well. And uh, it does get pretty stiff. That transfer paper, once it gets heated, it seems like it kind of stiffens up some. Yeah, the glue's even tacky there, so I can kind of feel it. So I'm just gonna use a cloth, kind of come back over, try to press everything real good, make sure that it does transfer, hopefully as much as I need it to, and just kind of give it an extra little press across the whole thing and let it cool down. All right, so that's that. Um, let's see if I can show you guys. This sheet of leather should have some good detail in it too. It's got a little bit of markup in it. So. I, uh, I think this is going to be perfect when I get some stain on and get, get, give it a little bit of color. I would, like I say, it does stiffen up. I don't know if, I assume you guys have no problem seeing how much stiffer that sheet was than the floppiness that it came as. Like even, you know, I can almost get it to stay almost flat. So it does stiffen it up quite a bit, but now that sheet's ready to go. So all I got to do is transfer that over into the laser with my designs and I can let that sucker run and uh, we'll see how it comes out. Side note. If you guys use these magnets at all, don't let them come together like this. I can't get these suckers apart to save my life. All right, so back over at the laser. I've got the sheet of leather in there. I've got my designs pulled up on the computer. Uh, something that we do, we actually get our laser, especially if we're doing the leather, we'll get our laser set at six millimeters, and then using light burn itself, I'll, uh, I'll move the laser to two millimeters out of focus. It just tends to give it a little bit better look. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and move that down two millimeters, that way we're focused more at eight for the engraved portion. So we bump that down. Now we're gonna go ahead and run that at the eight millimeters. We're just gonna do the engraved section right now. We're not gonna go ahead and do any of the cut. We'll move the laser back up that two millimeters to cut it. Gives it a nice clean cut on the edge. All right, so we're back over with the laser. Got everything set up, it's ready to go. We're gonna give it one last frame. And again, we're just doing the engraved portion. That's so why you kind of see the laser bump down just that little hair up at the top corner, it kind of moves and then it starts doing its framing. That's because it's not cutting it out right now. So we're gonna go ahead and run those. I'll let you guys stay in a nice spot where you can see it. With that glue, it does, I believe, need that second pass to really get through it. Alright, so there is the dad patch. One for 
Brooks. And we've got another one for Jax. So we're going to go ahead and get these cleaned up and ready to get uh, stained. And I'll bring you guys over for that process. All right, I hope you guys can hear me over there. Compressor in the background. I've got another project running. Um, my customer did get back to me. I'm going to go with the buckskin for the stain, if that wants to focus on that. It's going to be, I use Phoebe part uh, so that's gonna be buckskin leather dye I'm gonna go ahead and I do all of my patches with airbrush so I'm gonna airbrush on my stain let that set for a little bit and then I'll get it sealed up so I'm just gonna uh, this will probably go to some music or something and then I'll, I'll get going on the airbrush and let you guys kind of see the process There they are, that's them all finished up. Um, I will go ahead and put a little bit of uh, cream on it. I use this cream. I actually, I don't remember if I got it from Tandy's or if I got it from Rocky Mountain Leather, but one or the other. I just finished it up with that. I don't want to affect the uh, the color too much of the buckskin. It does have like a little bit more of like a yellowish, greenish hue, which I'm not sure if the camera will pick up on real well or not. So. That's them. We're gonna get set up and I'll show you guys how I put them on the hats. All right guys, I'm over at my heat press. I, uh, I actually get it heated to 290. It's just not quite there yet. So you let that keep heating. Um, I also, I'm not the best at my placement. Like I don't get it perfect. So I went ahead and I always make myself a stencil. I've got card stock. It just takes me a minute. So I make a stencil out of it. There's our patch. It's ready to go. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to film this very well. So I'll do my best to see if my wife's not busy. And yeah, I know my desk is a mess. I've got these packing papers. I gotta find a good home for them. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just a lot of, I got a lot of projects going at the same time. So we've got paints out, we've got clear coats, we've got the hats, the patches, we've got stains from some other stuff. It's just, it's a going process. It's just constantly moving and grooving. So. Yeah, let me see if uh, I can get a little bit of help with the filming of this, and then I'll bring you guys in for the video. All right, so I'm gonna get my hat on here. Just double check measurements one more time. I like to get my hat warm. Um, they do tell you to use the Hot Tronics, which has got the uh, dual heated platen from the top and the bottom. I don't have that. So I make the best of what I do have, which is gonna be using this guy. Getting my hat warm with the hat nice and warm. You can kind of place this on here. Get it where I like it. Just kind of check my fit. And if you get the hat warm enough, it will stick a little bit. I'm gonna heat it up some more. It'll activate the glue in the back of it just that little bit. And then you can actually press it on there and it'll stay kind of in that spot. I'm gonna go ahead and use the silicone to cover it up as well. It should be nice and warm. Oh yeah, push it down a little bit, and then I just want this to just warm enough to activate the glue, try to get it somewhat in place. Take my sheet over the top. It on then it's 60 seconds at 290 degrees Oh, 
that out. Pressed on, I like it. I let it cool just a little bit and then I'll actually give it one final light press just to really make sure that everything gets set. Corners look good, feel good. Slipping. finished up so I've got two more to do I'm gonna go ahead and knock those out and then uh, I'll kind of do my final thoughts on it give you guys a little glimpse at the the end result and how everything came out and just review the project all together I'm just uh, getting them ready get some good photos of them and then they'll be ready to get packaged up and go out to the customer so uh, I'll do a little kind of review of the hide bond. I still want to let it set for a little bit and just kind of check it all over after the fact. So I will add on either to this video or do another video kind of just reviewing it and talking about it a little bit. But so far, I mean, I'm happy with it to this point. Everything's on there tight. I don't have any loose corners at all. Um, I did see, I think this one, yeah, there's a little, I don't even know if I can see it on the camera. It's like a little spot where you can see a little glue just ever so slightly there's just a baby little spot but I think that might have just been my press more than the glue itself so I'm not I'm gonna chalk that one up to me and uh, having a not so great press but so far I'm happy high bond seems like it's definitely at least a viable option um, obviously it'll be better if you've got the correct press for it but again to this point I'm happy with it so that's going to finish off this one if I don't add on. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.